Well, this is the top of the shifter housing out of the five-speed on the Suzuki. It's a Samurai. Basically, it's a Samurai. Same transmission, five-speed. And what happened is, there's this bolt that goes in here, and uh, it's kind of a typical thing that breaks. It broke off the end. That's why I lost fifth gear. I couldn't really shift into it. Well, I found uh, a bolt. It was actually on one of my Harley um, rotor bolts that hold the ro rotor on the Harley wheel, the rotor on the Harley Davidson. It's the same size, about the same length. Just put an extra washer in there. And uh, I ground it down. You can see the pin there. It's that size like that and that size like that, which fits in this groove right here. That groove right here, that groove has to fit that silver pin, which is the end of that bolt. So I had to make one out of a bolt. I ordered a bolt, so, you know, whenever it gets here, I'll probably change it. The only thing I guess it's weird about this one is that it has, uh, it's a Torx screw. Then uh, there's a um, neoprene bushing I got going over the top here. Um, I'm going to grease this whole thing up before I put it back together and um, put some, uh, what do you call that stuff on there, gasket maker. Got it out of here, right here. Gasket maker gray. Uh, and then this just goes over his. Basically, uh, let me shut this off. So slides through there. I was trying to push it through where those two springs are. And this goes in, you bolt the tower back on, those are four 12 millimeter bolts. You put the three 10 millimeter bolts over here. That's a, this would normally be a 12 millimeter, but I got that other bolt in there, it still works. And then this slides off to the top, and over that's a boot. Protects it from dust from the top. And I uh, screw the knob back on. Put the boot on, you know, and the four bolts that hold the plate in. Basically that's it. Um, this typically, the earlier ones have a thinner bolt, not as wide. The later ones have a wider bolt. And you know, you can actually, you strip out the bolt in this housing. You can just go to McMaster and uh, get a steel insert. And say you stripped out the threads that go into where the bolt goes into the housing. Just get a steel insert and uh, tap it and uh, put a steel insert in it and then repair it. You know, they, they, they got this... Uh, $50 exchange program garbage or $30 exchange program to freaking do a simple thread repair. You strip that bolt out. So I'm going to put this thing back together. And uh, I'm going to get the new bolt in. It's freaking $3 bolt, $6 for shipping, right? Ridiculous. And it should work. I was driving home Friday from uh, Fanning Springs at that Confederate meeting. And uh, I couldn't get it in overdrive. I remember right before that I was having... The shifter was uh, real sloppy, and this pin was actually not falling it down into the housing. Sometimes they fall down into housing. Sometimes you got to take this off to get at, and you got to fish it out with a magnet. Uh, it was actually stuck in there, and I had to use a little uh, punch to knock it through to get it out. But I was trying to unscrew it, and just somehow it knocked it knocked it out with a punch. I took a Dremel tool and I made, I just cut the threads down on this and uh, it fits in that slot no problem so it'll work fine actually I don't need to put a new bolt in it but and that's it, that bolt is uh, for a rotor it holds a brake rotor on a Harley Davidson, it's a hardened bolt so it's not going to break <laughs> so and uh, we'll be greasing up inside of here put this thing back together and uh It'll be on the road again. It's kind of a simple fix, but I couldn't get it. It was getting a little sloppy on the shifting, but then all of a sudden I got real sloppy. It was like uh, it was like you could move the shifter back and forth, almost like it was in neutral and it was in gear. I noticed that when I got it was on the way up, I was doing that. It was just when the bolt snapped. These days do snap. You probably should change that bolt every once in a while, just for the hell of it, because. It could give you. It could leave you stuck in gear, and then if you don't have some wrenches to pull off all this stuff, the housing you're going to be stuck in gear for a while. You could get stuck someplace, so that's a fix. We're done. 
We've got the new neoprene balsam bolt uh, bushing on the top. It just presses in there. I'm going to pull that out, put grease in there again before I put this back together. I'm going to put the uh, uh, gasket maker on here for clean this off. And, uh, you know, it's good to go. Actually, it's, no, it's not going to. It's not going to break, but when I get the new bolt in, I'll change this one out too. So, be good. Just, you know, you should change that as preventive medicine, though. To tell you the truth, this one bolt right here and that bushing on the top. Just checking this, it shifts nice and tight. Needs hardly any play back and forth. Third, fourth, fifth, reverse. Nice and tight. That's neutral. Got it first. Hardly any play. It's good to go. It's better than whatever it was. It cost that bushing too. So probably not going to change this bolt out because I don't think it's going to break. But I'll probably just keep the bolt, the other bolt, in the um, glove box. But I put Loctite blue on everything. I didn't torque everything, but I have a good feel for what the torque is. You don't want to tighten, tighten down these bolts too tight with the, in the aluminum. I didn't torque them, but. They are torqued about right because uh, I know about what to do. You can kind of tell, but I put Loctite blue on everything. So the only thing now you got to put the uh, little rubber boot, inner boot, and the outer boot. Boot that goes on there. And then you just put this outer boot and uh, the plate with the four bolts, and put the knob on. It, you're done. But man, I tightened it up a lot. So huh. good to go.